Hi fellow Webflowers! In this Essential Webflow Sliders tutorial, you will learn everything you need to know about Webflow's native sliders. After this video, you will be able to build a testimonial slider like this. And I also will show you a trick on how to make your slides always to have the same height, like this. So without further ado, let's get started. So we start with a closer look at the final result and then make a deep dive into the process of building it. So here you can see the slider component. This is the entire slider and you could just duplicate it uh, to have a second instance or just copy it to a, another page. Um, within the components, you find uh, here this slider mask. This contains actually all the slides, but you also find the slider navigation here. And this consists of these two arrows and the pagination here. Let's have a closer look at the slides themselves. So here you can see um, the slides. All content of a slide, regardless of its, uh, if it's an image, text or whatever, has to be a child of this slide element. Um, on this hierarchy level, there can be only the slide elements. That means you can't just uh, drag an image somewhere in between. You see? Yeah, to duplicate a slide, you can right click on a slide and choose duplicate. Or you go to the slider settings here and then add a slide element. But the problem with this is it really just adds an empty slide element and not uh, the cards you have already in all the other slides. So you will need to add your classes and all the other content. So I prefer to duplicate the slide and change the content. But let's have a look at all the other slider settings here. Uh, when you want to change the content of a slide that is currently not visible, uh, you can use this navigation here uh, to make it visible and actually move the slider a little bit. Or you can directly choose the slide if you know uh, on which position the slide is you are uh, you want to change. And here you can change the type of the animation. So for example, you could uh, use a fade animation instead of a slide animation. But yeah, this will break our slider layout. So let's keep it um, uh, with the slide animation for now. And here you can change the easing of the animation to something more dynamic. And here you can change the duration of the animation. And of course, you could also create a custom animation by selecting one of these slides here, then click on this interactions tab and choose slider change here as a trigger. But this would be another tutorial. So let's get back to our slider settings. Um, so here you could choose to infinite repeat the slides, uh, what will look like this. And this here is the last slide. And once this is through the viewport, the slider gets restarted. Here you could disable the swipe gesture for mobile. And here you can set an autoplay. And this one is to hide the next arrow once the slider reaches the last slide. But I also think this looks more like a bug than a feature. So I never use it. And uh, here you have some options for the slider dots, but I prefer to use custom code to create my uh, styles for it um, because it just gives me a better control about it. So let's return uh, to our slides. So let's return to um, the slides. When I collapse one of the slides, you will see at first um, the class testimonial card one item. So inside this item, we have a classical testimonial card. And my advice is that you always use the same classes until here and then place your custom uh, slides items in it. Um, this is a systematical and cleaner approach that doesn't blow up your CSS file. And it's just a good best practice. If you want to adjust the gap between the slides, you can add a margin to the slider item like uh, this. For example, yeah. Oh, and if you want to become a top notch Webflow developer to win new clients and increase your rates, then don't forget to subscribe to my channel, not to miss any of the following videos, because 
I frequently release videos about Webflow, Figma, design strategies, and creative business. But let's get back to our slider. So if you want to change the number of slides you want to display, um, you have to select a slider mask and actually change its width. Currently, you can see it's set to 33.33%. So it displays roughly three slides within the container. And when I set it to 50%, now you can see it uh, displays two slides. This is especially good for smaller breakpoints when three slides don't fit next to each other anymore and you maybe just want to display two or even on mobile just uh, one. But uh, let's have a look on mobile. Instead of setting it to 100%, you should set it to something like 95% so the user still can see a little bit of the next slide here on the right side. So let's switch back to desktop. And yeah, our next item here is the slider arrows. It is the two links elements uh, you can see here. And yeah, unfortunately you can't move them up or down here in the hierarchy, but uh, you can place whatever you want within it. Doesn't matter if it's an um, SVG icon like here, or you could also place some text, whatever. So if you want to change the position, uh, you actually would need to do that with uh, styling. And to change the styling of this pagination here, you only have a few native Webflow settings. So here it is. You can choose whether you want the icon to be rounded or have squares, um, but that's it actually. Oh yeah, and here you can invert the color, but you can't change the color or change the size or change the, um, the gap between the dots um, to do so. Um, we have to add some custom code, but don't worry. Here are the classes uh, you need to change and you also find the link to the clonable in the description of this video. So go to your global styles embed or create one if you haven't done yet. And don't worry about the number of embeds I have here. They're just to sort uh, the custom code a little bit. Um, probably it's enough for you to only have one embed. So open it and paste in this CSS. So the first one with this W active actually styles the active dot and gives it uh, this green background color. And the second one styles all other dots and gives it some kind of grayish color. Yeah. And if you want to change the size of the dots, uh, just add it, uh, just add some width and height here. Let's try something uh, like 0. 75 rem for each. So let's close the embed again. And if we have a look at our slider now, it doesn't really look good because the height of each slider card is different. So in order to have all sliders with the same height, we need some custom CSS again. <laughs> for this, reopen your custom styles embed and write this CSS. And you can see all classes with the prefix w dash are the Webflow standard classes. When you target them, the CSS will work on all sliders regardless of your custom custom classes. The only class you need to uh, change here is the last one. Um, this is the class of my testimonial card. And once you save the embed, you can see all my slides have the same height based on the card with the longest content. And if you want to learn how to get the content for your slider from a CMS collection, then you should watch this video next. Thanks for watching and as always, stay in the flow.